Hey guys, today I just thought we'd take a look at this GoTrax G2 scooter. It's giving us this E3 era and it doesn't seem to clear. If we look up help on this, GoTrax just pretty much shows replace console as we see here on the screenshot. Not much help at all. Let's go ahead and get us a 2 millimeter hex wrench and we'll start taking this console cover off. I just want to get a look inside here. A 564 may fit here as well. Next, we get a 4 millimeter or a 532nd may fit. I think this wrench is provided with the scooter. You can separate the console and handle. Actually, pretty cool how this scooter connects. First time I worked on one like this, and the way it connects to the battery pack. And the battery pack connects through to the motor is pretty cool. So give you a few shots here of what the board looks like and just use a combination wrench here and um I think a half inch works pretty well. Just reach in here and grab the battery out as we see the bottom connection where it plugs into the motor, the actual drive hub motor. Back on the bench here, I'm just gonna cut a tie wrap. Let's look at these cables and see if it's anything obvious we can find without replacing the whole console. We are going to go ahead and mark the connectors, even though I think these are mated where you can't really get them confused easily. I still mark some silver, some black, and they look similar to me. This first screw seems to be on the connector itself. Remove this screw and maybe we can lift the connector. And then we look like looks like we have at least four screws here on the board so let's remove these four from the corners and see if the board will lift out let's make sure everything's unplugged first all right connector lifted out there's a red washer up under there like a spacer we we'll have to remember to put that back And there's our fifth screw. I guarantee you it's up under this, this little hot snot spot. Yep, there it goes. Most of these are just number one Phillips. Some number twos will fit the heads too, but my number one Phillips fit these and the board's removed. What our transistors on the bottom. Be careful here that none of the heat sink compound gets removed from these. It helps transfer the heat. So we want to keep that white compound on the transistors as best as we can. And here we see our Mylar as a heat sink and an insulation. And we can get to our three Phillips that goes to our front cover where the LED light is. And once this cover lifts up, we see that now we can remove the handlebars if we would like to. Probably going to make getting to the wire a little bit easier. So uh, I did want to show how we get to our accelerator and brake throttle control. I believe they're going to be like a hall sensor feedback. So I took this off to show that. Doesn't really help me get to anything here for troubleshooting at this time. Neither does taking the board off. I did I did want to go through and in diode mode and check all my transistors, but that's that's really beyond the scope of this repair, but I did want to check it while I had it off. And I was really just interested in what was behind there. And if I had to take that off to get the face off, and I did. One thing I wanted to share here is if we cut this on, we get E3. I don't have the charging port hooked up for now. We don't need it, of course. But if I hold down our, like the thumb throttle for the brake, if we cut it on, we show E2. So E2 is going to be showing a brake issue. If I held this down while E3 was showing, it would just show E3. But if I release it, you see it goes to E3. So I'm thinking it might be in this the actual throttle, accelerator throttle thumb control. Because if I hold this down like it's faulty and I decide to cut it on at the same time, I still just get an E3. So I believe we're having trouble with this throttle control. So what I'm going to do is bring my meter over so you can see it better on DC volts. So we're going to cut it back on. 
and taking that off helped me just a tad, but I'm trying to figure out which is which. I believe this one that I marked as silver goes to my brake, and the one I marked as black here goes to my throttle. So for you, the, the one that matches where the green in the middle goes to brake, and the green to blue looks like it goes to the throttle. So we're getting across red and black, we're getting four volts. It's probably a five volt system. The middle pin's giving me 0.7 volts. So if I hold this on here and move it, yep, our voltage goes up to over 3.3 volts if I can hold it on there. Yeah, about 3.3 volts input. So the one to the throttle, we're getting five volts. And nothing. Aha. Okay, so we're not getting nothing back from our throttle. So we gotta look into the throttle part. Life hooked up no way. Look at there. There you go. I guess the hall sensor, the lead come off the hall sensor, it looks like. However, that was a sensor, it is just gone. So if you can see this, we're supposed to have a hall sensor sitting here between these two magnets. And as we rotate the magnetic field between these two magnets, and the hall sensor just goes between the, I guess the south and north facing magnets in that field. And it just gives us the analog signal value out. So it kind of does away with the potentiometer or a solid state device here to give us our feedback. But in this case, this one has gotten uh, broken. It may have got pinched in there or wedged in, not really sure. So there's the hall sensor there. It actually had broke off, I guess. So the hall sensor must have come out of the slot and got ripped off. Wasn't expecting to see that. And before I spend money on a new thumb throttle for this, I'm gonna do a test. So when we cut this on, 
and we're not hooked up to our throttle, we still get our E3. So I'm gonna hook up a jumper that I have. Little pin jumpers. And what I'm doing is just, I'm taking the analog signal from the brake controller or the brake thumb control and I'm getting a zero zero like it's ready to run so and there we go we're getting the E3 again so that's just one way we can kind of just fool it just for a second to verify that if we get an analog signal back here that it would be ready to run so when our throttle comes in we'll put it back together so now that we've done our troubleshooting in this video, in the next video, once we get our throttle replacement in, we'll put it back together and we'll see if it works. So if you'd like to check out that video, please do so. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe. I'll have some links down in the video description of some tools and things I find interesting on my workbench. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links. They really help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.